right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the online learning channel. My name is Brad, and I will be assisting you today with English, specifically focusing on the grade 12 curriculum. And when it comes to today's presentation, we're going to be looking at the aspect of English that refers to reading and viewing, uh, specifically focusing on literature. So without uh, further ado, I'd like to just share with you a PowerPoint presentation that will guide us in our conversations that uh, pertain to not only literature, but specifically focusing at the novel aspect of literature. In this case, we are going to be looking at the life of, Pri of Pi. So let us then begin. Okay, so as stated, we're going to be focusing on literature, and this refers to the aspect of English known as reading and viewing. And remember, when it comes to literature, we can either, of course, uh, be taking it on in the form of poetry, in the form of actual novels, and then of course dramatic items, typically of a Shakespearean theme. So when it comes to the actual uh, English home paper language, a uh, home paper number two, the sections that uh, the paper is divided into, section A, poetry, section B, the novel section, and section C, the dramatic item. So you need to answer five questions in all. Section A is the poetry section, section B the novel, and section C the dramatic item. So now when it comes to poetry, we've discussed this previously, it's often the case that you'll be uh, faced with a couple of prescribed poems that you've now prepared for and studied for prior to the exam. And then of course you may, have, may come across an unseen poem. When it comes to the novel section of the paper, this is going to be the focus of today's discussion. You may come across a series of uh, novels that you may or may not have read, uh, depending on um, your, your school's uh, prerogative. But uh, for today's purposes, we're going to be focusing on the life of Pi. And then, of course, the dramatic items often is the case that these are a number of Shakespearean productions. So when it comes to answering questions in section B and section C, when it comes to the idea of taking on an essay or a contextual question, this is typically what you'll be faced with. And when it comes to this particular section, you do need to answer one or the other, one contextual question and or, and or of course, an essay question, um, either in section B or section C. Now, when it comes to the actual essay questions in section B and section C, typically they should be between 400 to 450 words, roughly speaking, that's two to two and a half pages long. You should aim for your essay to be concise, to be relevant, and to be uh, focused on answering the questions as specifically and as coherently as possible. Okay, when it comes to time management, I would suggest that when it comes to section B, you would dedicate about 55 minutes to this particular section, just so it gives you enough time to cover the entire paper in the amount of time allocated. Okay, so this is a table just indicating the various poems that we've covered in the, in the series, together with the, 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 the novels that we'll also be covering throughout the series. Uh, previously, we focused on Animal Farm, but for today's purposes, we're gonna be looking at the life of Pi. And this is again, of course, just another table indicating the various dramatic productions. Okay, so let's look at a past exam paper and then let us look at the potential questions and of course the answers that now you as the students may now uh, bring across in terms of your interpretation. So section B, we're gonna be focusing on the essay question first and foremost. And as I indicated earlier, it is the life of Pi. Okay, so now when it comes to the story, the life of Pi, the, the essay question starts us off with a statement. So in the life of Pi, the establishment of boundaries is essential for survival. Okay, so we just need to understand the statement in the context of the actual story itself. The question is asking us to critically discuss the extent to which you agree with the above statement. So often is the case when it comes to these essay questions that the examiner would like to hear your take on a particular, say, you know, quote or a particular statement or a particular notion that, of course, makes reference to, to the novel itself. So in your response, you should formulate a well-constructed essay of 400 to 450 words. Otherwise, uh, you can interpret that as two to two and a half pages. And it's worth 25 marks. So it's, it's fairly extensive, this particular question. 
Okay, so let's get straight into it in terms of answering this particular question. So now just in terms of looking at, at that idea of the establishment of boundaries being essential to survival, the candidates, uh, that's you of course, might argue that the establishment of boundaries in the animal kingdom is, uh, as well as in the human world, is essential for survival. Okay, so life is essentially all about boundaries. Uh, often is the case that people now, um, you know, in some cases may uh, infringe on those boundaries and that may cause a bit of tension, a bit of, um, you know, altercation, wherever it may be. But in most cases, if people do stick to their boundaries or their parameters, often is the case that they will be, um, you know, well protected. So in this particular case, uh, I have agreed with the statement in the sense that it's essential to establish boundaries in order to secure one's survival uh, in the context of the actual story. So just a couple of points. Animals will never intentionally wander outside their boundaries because they have innate awareness of their territories. So Pi cites numerous examples to illustrate the ter territorial nature of animals. Now remember, of course, when it comes to the life of Pi, the animal in question, of course, is the tiger. Okay, so the boundaries of the zoo offer, rich, offer Richard Parker protection from the anxieties of guarding territory, worrying about predators or starving to death. So Mr. Patel teaches his sons about boundaries that they may not traverse when he demonstrates the danger of forgetting the, the violent nature of animals. Often is the case that we can uh, forget that animals, um, you know, instinctively are, are pretty violent creatures, especially if they are predators. So Pi grows up in the confined and protected environment of his loving family and the sense of security this gives him allows him the freedom to explore new ideas such as religious freedom, for instance. So when Pi is stranded on the lifeboat, essentially the crux of the story, that security is taken away from him. He has to defend his territory and fend off predators. Pi creates a mental barrier between the savagery of the cook on the one hand and his, and his mother's violent acts on the other hand in order to maintain his sanity. Pi uses the knowledge he has of animals marking their territory to demarcate his living space from Richard Parker's. He does this to protect himself and, of course, to ensure his own survival. All right, some further points you can add. He uses storytelling and practical activities to establish mental boundaries so that he is not overwhelmed by the grief of losing his family or to allow himself to become despondent, which is, of course, um, uh, it's, it's easily understandable that that may have been the case, considering that he's stranded on a lifeboat in the middle of the ocean. It might be argued that his withdrawal into a hallucinatory world using the rag soaked with uh, using the rag soaked with seawater is his attempt to create a boundary to keep out the reality of his dire situation. This uh, ironically keeps him sane. In the second story, Pi projects his brutal actions onto Richard Parker as a way of dealing with the darkness and the savagery within himself. So by establishing a boundary, Pi protects himself from the inhumanity of which he is capable. So again, this is human nature, unfortunately, raising its ugly face. In order to resume a normal life, Pi has to compartmentalize his experience at sea. He does this by separating the brutal and murderous side of himself from his gentler vegetarian side, which would have been, of course, quite evident in his life at home. In order to move on with his life, Pi acquires an education, a career, and a family, an accomplishment made possible because of the boundary that he creates between himself and Richard Parker. So you as the candidates might argue that sometimes boundaries can be destructive, as illustrated by the separation of religions. Pi's ignoring of these confines to embrace three, three different religions shows that it is possible to transcend these boundaries despite one's original safe faith base. Okay, so when it comes to the essay question, it's important to just elaborate on any points that you may feel are relevant in response to the actual question, uh, in this particular case, elaborating on the notion of boundaries. Okay, so we're going to be moving on to the contextual question now. So now when it comes to the contextual question, um, we have an extract here for you from the actual novel, and it goes as follows. Mother looked beautiful and sad. She, for she was leaving India 
India of the heat and monsoons, of rice fields and the Kaveri River, of coastlines and stone temples, of bullock carts and colorful trucks, of friends and known shopkeepers of Nehru Street and Gubar Salai, of this and that, India so familiar for her, to her and loved by her. While her men, I fancied myself, one already, though I was only 16, were in a hurry to get going, where Winnipeg is at heart, already she lingered. The day before our departure, she pointed at a cigarette waller and earnestly asked, should we get a pack or two? Father replied, they have tobacco in Canada. And why do you want to buy cigarettes? We don't smoke. Yes, they have tobacco in Canada, but do they have gold flake cigarettes? Do they have Arun ice cream? Are the bicycle hero, bicycles heroes? Are the televisions onidas? Are the cars ambassadors? Are the bookshops Higginbotham's? Such, I suspect, were the questions that swelled in mother's mind as she contemplated buying cigarettes. As the ship was worked out of the dock and piloted out to sea, I wildly waved goodbye to India. The sun was shining, the breeze was steady, and seagulls shrieked in the air above as I was terribly excited. Okay, so this particular extract is clearly referring to the, the family in question here that is now making the move to Canada, leaving their life behind in India. So when it comes to the questions, the first question is asking us as to account for Pai's father, father's decision to immigrate to Canada. What could possibly be the reason behind Pai's father's decision for their family to immigrate to India? Well, India is going through some political uncertainty at the time, and Pai's father is concerned about the effect that this may, might have on their future. He is afraid that despite all the effort he has put into making the zoo a success, budgetary cuts from government will force him to close it down. Canada, on the other hand, offers the family better prospects. Okay, so Canada, considered a first world country by many. In this particular case, the family feels that they are more, say, uh, prosperous uh, um, prospects going forward into the future as opposed to lingering in India itself. So now if we refer to lines four to six, the quote in question, while her men at heart already. Okay, so this particular line is now making mention of Pai's mother and her response. So explain how Pai and Ravi's attitudes in these lines contrast with her initial reaction to leaving India. Okay, so how do her initial reactions, um, or how, how do these, um, how does this statement contrast with her initial reactions to leaving India itself? So the expression Winnipeggers at heart shows Pai and Ravi's eagerness to embrace their new lives in Canada. They are initially reluctant, though, to immigrate, as any would be, one would imagine. Their opinion of Canada is that it is a country with extremely harsh weather conditions, and Ravi, who is a talented cricketer, is, a, is concerned that uh, cricket is not a Canadian sport. Okay, so these are some of the concerns that Ravi has in light of their immigration. Okay, so moving on to question number three. Refer to lines 13 to 14, such I suspect contemplated buying cigarettes. So now, just in terms of discussing what this particular sentence suggests about Pai's understanding of his mother at this particular point in the novel, what could we offer as an answer? So Pai realizes that his mother is anxious about immigrating and what the future might hold. He understands her need to cling to what is familiar. Her desire to purchase cigarettes despite not smoking reflects her need to surround herself with familiar objects in the unfamiliar country of Canada. She wants to retain her attachment to India, even in the form of insignificant items, in this case, cigarettes. Although she does not voice her thoughts, Pai intuitively knows uh, what she's thinking because he shares similar sentiments and a close bond with his mother. So Pai's mother clearly in this particular instance is now looking to um, hold on to any kind of attachment that typically reminds her of India and home itself. Okay, so fourth question then. So if we were to discuss what the sentence suggests about Pai's understanding of his mother at this particular point in time, this is essentially what we would have to uh, offer. So Pai's description of the scene emphasizes his anticipation of a happy life in a new land. The reference to the favorable weather evokes feelings of happiness in him. 
However, his expectations of a happy future do not materialize as the tsum sinks, his, father drown, his family drowns, he is stranded on a lifeboat, and he undergoes many ordeals before he reaches any form of civilization. So candidates, of course, that is you, might suggest that Pi's appreciation of nature here is ironic because of the suffering that he and I has to endure at the hands of nature whilst on a lifeboat. Okay, so just a couple of responses um, to those questions in light of this particular section of the novel. So now we move on to the second extract for today. And when it comes to this particular extract, as you can see, there are a couple of um, indicators there that suggest that various lines are now going to potentially be uh, referenced to when it comes to the questions that follow. But without further ado, let us then uh, just look at this particular extract and see what it has to say. I wept like a child. It was not because I was overcome at having survived my ordeal, though I was, nor was it the presence of my brothers and sisters, though that too was very moving. I was weeping because Richard Parker had left me so unceremoniously. What a terrible thing it is to botch a farewell. I'm a person who believes in form, in the harmony of order. Where we can, we must give things a meaningful shape. Okay, so those are the first five lines of this particular extract. It is important in life to conclude things properly. Only then can you let go. Otherwise, you are left with words you should have said, but never did, and your heart is heavy with remorse. That bungled goodbye hurts me to this day. I wish so much that I had one last look at him in the lifeboat, that I'd provoked him a little, so that I was on his mind. I wish I had said to him then, yes, I know, to a tiger, but still, I wish I had said, Richard Parker, it's over. We have survived. Can you believe it? I owe you more gratitude than I can express. I couldn't have done it without you. I would like to say formally, Richard Parker, thank you. Thank you for saving my life. And now go where you must. You have known the confined freedom of a zoo most of your life. Now you will know the free confinement of a jungle. I wish you all the best with it. Watch out for the man. He is not your friend, but I hope you remember me as a friend. Okay, so with, with the reference now to this particular extract, uh, the questions that follow. So now this particular question is at first glance, potentially quite vague, but it is asking us to place the extract in context. So it's, it may be quite difficult to come across a question such as this, especially when you are now having to recall a, a particular section of the novel um, that uh, is pretty much you know, a, a lottery at this point. So when it comes to this particular extract, you obviously wouldn't have been aware of it before the examination. So now that you've been faced with this extract, now placing it in the context of the novel, can be uh, slightly difficult, but uh, let's just give it a go anyway. So now when it comes to placing this particular extract in context, essentially Pi has now finally reached the shores of Mexico after leaving the Algar Island. He can hardly believe that his ordeal is now over. Richard Parker immediately disappears into the jungle. Pi is found by a group of villagers. Okay, so it's quite a contrast in the sense that the two have now been pretty much enduring this, this hardship on the sea in the lifeboat for many, many weeks. And essentially now, when uh, the likes of Pi and Richard Parker reach the shores of Mexico, it's as if uh, natural instinct takes over and uh, Richard Parker immediately you know, escapes into the jungle. However, with regards to Pi, he's now obviously having to encounter you know, humans once again for the first time in a long time. And this may be a slightly, um, you know, disorientating experience in the sense that he's pretty much had to endure a pretty, a pretty severe experience alongside a, a, an animal in the form of, of course, Richard Parker. So if we then go on to the second question, question number six, it's asking us to refer to line number six. So it's important in life, you let go. Okay, so Richard uh, uh, Pi is now suggesting that it's important in life that you let go. Okay, so if we go back to line number six, we can see that's the first line in the second half of this particular say slide. Um, so it's important in life to conclude things properly, only then can you let go. 
All right, so now the question is asking us to explain why Pi has now reached this particular conclusion. Why now has he reached this conclusion that it's important in life to, to let go? Only then, of course, can you allow yourself to move on. So Pi regrets, essentially, uh, not having had the opportunity to say goodbye to his family, who now drown in the shipwreck. So he has not been able to express his gratitude to his family uh, due to the fact that they've obviously been taken away from him so abruptly. And he's also devastated that Richard Parker now leaves him without any kind of hesitation or with, without any form of acknowledging the hardships that they have suffered together. So this lack of closure still has the ability to affect him emotionally. Okay, so it's, it's almost twofold here where essentially, um, you know, Pi is unable to now say goodbye to his family. Um, not that anyone would typically want to be in a scenario where they have to say goodbye to their family, never to see them ever again. But in this case, it's obviously a bit of a, a freak accident in the sense that the ship does, uh, of course, um, you know, sink and many of his family members drown as a result and with him being the only survivor. And, you know, the only kind of companionship, companionship that he has uh, with the so-called living world is the likes of a tiger, okay, in the form of Richard Parker who, of course, um, doesn't quite have the ability to show any form of emotion. So when naturally they do reach the shores of Mexico, Richard Parker instinctively carries on with his particular, say, way of life. And that is one that is typically, um, you know, within the jungle, as opposed to sticking around with Richard Parker and, you know, experiencing the encounters that me, he may have had at that point in time. So you may offer that particular perspective, but at the same time, with reference to the second story, Pi has to forgive himself for his brutal actions on the lifeboat. In many cases, you could argue that Pi was not exactly himself. He almost went into a kind of, uh, a kind of survival of the fittest type of mode where he was fending for his life, as opposed to thinking about you know, all the different dynamics that were taking place. He has to reconcile the two sides of himself and forgive himself in order to lead a normal life once again. So even though he was faced with some pretty dire situations and perhaps didn't exactly uh, behave in a manner that uh, would naturally describe the man, he does need to, of course, reflect on that and forgive himself in order to move on and not have any kind of sense of remorse or any kind of sense of guilt um, based on his actions in the lifeboat. So candidates, you will essentially be awarded three marks for any two ideas that are well discussed or any three distinct ideas that are essentially uh, elaborated on uh, to the point that is deemed appropriate. So you, you essentially want to secure all three marks so as to, of course, uh, gain as much, um, you know, gain as, as many um, points as possible. All right, so moving on then to the, sec oh, the seventh question, excuse me. So in terms of referring to lines 15 to 16, watch out for not your friend. Okay, so lines 15 to 16, it's making mention of this, uh, this notion that watch out for man, he is not your friend, but I hope you will remember me as a friend. So you'll notice in the, that in the question, it doesn't necessarily quote the line word by word or verbatimly. It's just making out the idea that something has to be watched out for. And uh, the conclusion reached is that whatever you're watching out for, he's not your friend. Okay, so in this case, it clearly is man. So that's the important aspect when it comes to now referring to these lines, because in the question, it may not necessarily reveal the line in its entirety. So you would have to go back to the extract and just uh, keep, uh, keep a note of, of what exactly is being mentioned here. So now, if you are to critically discuss the validity of Pi's warning to Richard Parker in light of the novel as a whole, okay, so clearly Rich, uh, Pi is now warning Richard Parker that man is not his friend, but he hopes that based on their experiences uh, on the lifeboat, fending for their lives, that he will be considered as a friend, as an exception. Okay, so now in terms of the validity of this warning, well, essentially, uh, it is valid in the sense that Pi's warning is valid because as a child, he witnesses many instances of man's cruelty to animals at his father's zoo. Um, you know, one could argue that in any zoo environment, the animals are not exactly, um, you know, 
living their best lives, if you will. You're not uh, you're not left with the sense that they are happy or totally satisfied with their conditions. And it doesn't help that in some cases the the actual say employees of that particular zoo may may treat them in a kind of, a kind of unfavorable manner. So he realizes the danger that humans pose to animals. These observations are reinforced by the sign near the entrance pointing out that man is the most dangerous animal in the zoo. So the inhumane actions of some of his fellow castaways validate this particular view. Okay, so Richard Park is not exactly um, convinced that man himself is exactly a model citizen in not only treating his fellow man with respect, but of course the animals themselves. So that uh, quote that man is the most dangerous animal in the zoo is, is quite familiar in the sense that, you know, in, in many different environments and many different, say, you know, ecosystems around the world, uh, much of the devastation, much of the destruction has, of course, been courtesy of man, which, of course, is, is pretty unfortunate. So in terms of uh, the candidates offering a, a, a response, you would, in most cases, suggest that this is a valid statement, but uh, you are, of course, open, you are, of course, allowed to state that it is invalid. However, this is more, than, more unlikely um, compared to a valid statement, but uh, the examiner does need to treat all your responses um, as long as they, you know, have some form of merit to them, does, it does um, require the examiner to, to offer you the, the benefit of the doubt, so to speak. Okay, so going back to the, the next question in terms of referring to lines 13 to 14 now, and now go where you must. Okay, so if we just go back to lines 13 to 14, so let us see. And now go where you must. You have known the confined freedom of a zoo most of your life. Now you will know the free confinement of a jungle. Okay, that's going on to lines 15 and 16, but it just again gives us a little bit of context to work with here. So now by referring to your knowledge of the novel as a whole, comment on whether Richard Parker's leaving at this point in the story is essential for Pi's well-being. So Pi often speaks about this idea of closure and now reaching a kind of end point of, source, of sorts so that it has to move on and carry on with one's life. But when the, the moment takes place where Richard Parker now leaves him, is this an actual point that serves him well, indirectly speaking? Okay, so I would agree that yes, this is indeed a point that uh, leaves Pi with a sense of reassurance in the sense that now that Pi has reached civilization, he no longer needs Richard Parker's companionship or the sense of purpose that taming the tiger gave him in the lifeboat. He feels Parker's freedom is well deserved. You know, all these hardships, all these dire situations, uh, one can often equate that to just uh, merely, you know, surviving in the wilderness, if you will, much like an animal would have to do. So if Richard Parker represents Pi's survival instinct, then his disappearance reflects Pi's realization that he no longer needs to behave in the same savage way as he did on the lifeboat. By releasing Richard Parker, he allows himself to become fully human once again and achieve the so-called happy ending that the narrator observes when he interviews the adult Pi. Okay, so again, it's just a, a, a kind of comparison that's been made here between the likes of, you know, on the lifeboat, in the confined space, they may feel trapped, they may feel, say, isolated, but as soon as they reach the shores of Mexico and any form of civilization, Pi now needs to take his route, of course, integrating back into human society. Richard Parker needs to take his particular route, integrating back into the animal kingdom or the jungle. And essentially, it both leaves them with a sense of purpose now. They have now rekindled their so-called natural environments and have allowed themselves to to become themselves once again. All right, everyone, so I trust that you enjoyed today's presentation. We've uh, focused on the novel section of English Home Language Paper number two, specifically looking at the novel, The Life of Pi. We've just looked at the idea of responding to an essay-based question together with a contextual-based question, what exactly one could face when it comes to the questions, and of course, what one could offer when it comes to the actual answers. Thank you for tuning in to the online learning channel. My name is Brad and we will see you next time. Thank you very much.